Hey guys, Mike Pytel here with ECX Warehouse, and today I'm going to be telling you the problem with Pytel compression system. So, in case you're not familiar, uh, a few years back there was a development that I made with Razor Scooters called the Pytel compression system. Uh, it was essentially a new compression system that was originally designed to be universal, uh, but as I got developing, I was like, all right. There's never going to be a system that works with all parts, but that was the original goal. What I accidentally ended up doing was making the first threadless externally maintenanceable compression system. What I mean by that is instead of taking the bars off, you could tighten the compression system right on the outside. I'll grab a Pytel compression system clamp in a little bit here and explain how it works a little bit more. But first, I want to tell you what the problem with it is. So. If you've ever heard of it, you're probably familiar with it from the District scooters. It was the C-Series. The problem with it was I didn't design the one that was on the District scooters. I designed the one on the Razor scooter, the Ultra Pro. That one worked great. That's the one that I rode on my scooter um, that I worked out with uh, the, one of the engineers at Razor. Um, and it was a great, nice, inexpensive, simple, externally maintenanceable compression system. Uh, and then I pretty much uh, was like, yeah, cool, you know, let other people use it. And District, I guess, contacted Razor to use the system, and I was never really involved in that interaction. And uh, District made a couple changes to the system that essentially made it not work, um, at least not properly. So what happened was, District released a system with my name uh, and, and basically an alteration of my design that didn't work. Uh, so I was immensely stoked because my system was put on these scooters that were sold worldwide, but as you could probably guess, I was a little bit bummed that I wasn't involved in that interaction at all. Uh, I wish that District had you know, maybe contacted me a little bit and uh, then maybe we could have released a system that worked and it wouldn't have kind of killed it and made it die off. Uh, but no turning back the clock, no, I'm not bitter about it, um, no regrets or anything like that, but it was definitely an experience. Um, but that is kind of the problem with it is that it didn't work, at least not the one that all you guys have been familiar with. And I'm okay with saying that. It was an idea that had some application. It, the main thing was that it was the first threadless externally maintenanceable compression system. And uh, I'm proud of it, but the development of it kind of got away from me and the design that worked. Um, and so that's the problem with it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so essentially, the Pytel compression system uh, was a triple clamp with a bottom collar. Uh, I'll get a little bit of a zoomed up view in a moment here, but essentially there was a wedge, a conical edge on the bottom that matched with uh, an opposing uh, wedge on the bottom collar. So you would tighten the clamp, which would hold the handlebars onto the fork, keep it all in line nice and safe, and then when you tighten the bottom collar, the wedge essentially, it would tension the clamp, uh, which would compress your headset. Uh, and this meant that you could tighten and loosen your compression system with an Allen key on the outside. So instead of loosening your clamp or your SCS and pulling your handlebars off and then tightening a compression bolt, you would just tighten the outside bolt. Um, so the idea was great. Like I said, the one on the Razor scooter, it worked. It was also a good way. You know, uh, I think the Razor scooter, I think was a hundred bucks for a scooter with a one piece deck, one piece aluminum handlebar, and a threadless compression system. So my system allowed that scooter to have a low price point with a high quality in that you had a threadless compression system. Um, you didn't need a star nut, you didn't need a compression bolt, you didn't need you know, any of those extras, so it was very simple. Um, but the 
version that Bishop released, uh, like I kind of mentioned, that had a couple alterations that made it not really work. Um, so that was a bummer, but uh, I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead, let's get some uh, close-up view of this. I'll show you some of the prototypes that I had, that I have as uh, memorabilia, and uh, kind of explain the system a little bit more in depth. Alright, so this is the Pytel compression system. So like I mentioned, this is a triple clamp. This is just a regular clamp with a shim, so it works with standard bars or oversized. And then this bottom collar, and essentially, this piece right here, this hole, is larger than what grabbed onto the handlebar. So that was one of the alterations that District made that essentially made it not work, is that their bottom collar, the uh, diameter right here, was the same as the clamp. So when you would tighten the bottom collar, it would tighten onto the handlebar before the headset compressed, and that made it not work at all. The other thing that they did is that they raised uh, the size of the bottom collar to a dimension that didn't work properly. All right, so this is the final product, but over the years, I had a lot of different development. I originally uh, made the first prototypes myself, and then when I started working with the engineer over at Razor, um, then they ended up machining some, uh, some prototypes for me. So, um, my, here it is. One of my first prototypes, um, I had a friend of mine did machining at his Votech school, so I gave him a working drawing that I made in AutoCAD and had him print out this little wedge piece for me that worked. Um, I kind of, my first prototypes, I would just cut up other scooter parts and uh, kind of make it into what I needed. So this is like half of a Tilt SCS that I used as a clamp, um, which also grabbed uh, onto the fork a little bit. And then this bottom wedge piece right here, um, that was the bottom collar. So this, like I said, would clamp down and that would hold the handlebar uh, and kind of hold the system all together and then this piece when you would tighten it it didn't tighten onto the handlebar or the fork all it did was wedge that out so another one of the prototypes again too um, I modified a tilt to kind of just have a clamp that worked on there um, so that system did that and what I liked about the early prototypes is that it held onto the handlebar and it held onto the fork to hold it all together and then that bottom piece also then compressed the headset. What was great about this was that that meant that the Pytel compression system, that bottom collar piece, didn't have to be its own system. It could also, in addition to that, just be an add-on to any other system on the market to make it externally maintenanceable. So, Essentially, this bottom piece right here, the original idea was to have a clamp that was part of the Pytel system, but then also make it to where this bottom collar of the collar, which you could close the bolt like a clamp to kind of activate the wedge, um, and this wedge piece. So this together is what tensions and compresses the system. Uh, and this could have been sold to be an add-on to an SCS or an HIC. And if you are riding and your compression comes loose without needing to take the handlebar off, you can adjust it. Or let's say you were at the skate park and you were trying a certain trick. You could loosen up your headset just a little bit to where it's still compressed properly, but your headset may be spelling a little bit quicker or faster um, without, again, too, needing to take the handlebar off. So it made your compression externally maintenanceable. It made it accessible from the outside by this bolt right here that would activate the wedge and tighten and loosen your system. That was kind of the main idea and it kind of got veered away from that a little bit, but, um, but yeah, and then we had a couple other prototypes, like I said, different angles. Um, I don't know if you can see that at all, but that was, I think, a 70 degree, whereas this is, uh, Man, I can't even remember off the top of my head, but I think that was a 60 degree angle. So we tried all different angles to kind of get the best, most optimal version. Um, this piece right here, um, originally we had a removable uh, bottom wedge. And what we kind of did was 
this would close and not work properly. So this was the original design. And then what I did is we made it a separate piece and kind of flipped it upside down. So instead of the female version of the wedge being part of the clamp that closed down onto the male wedge, we turned the clamp to have the male wedge and the bottom collar was the female wedge that then got pushed down. Um, and that worked a little bit better because what would happen here is you would have these holes right here so that uh, you could compress the bottom part of the clamp different from the top. And what happened was as you would ride, it would bend up right there. So that prototype didn't really work. And so then we kind of scrapped that idea and flipped it and made it that uh, separate piece like my original design was. So this right here is District's version of it. Essentially, it's the same to where we have the triple clamp, we have this uh, male wedge on the bottom attached to the clamp, and then we had the female wedge, the bottom collar. Uh, but like I said, the problem with that is that this diameter right here was the same as the diameter for the clamp. So you would go, you tighten the clamp, and then you go to tighten up your compression by tightening the bottom collar, and instead of it activating and wedging properly, it would just grab onto the handlebar and then didn't work at all. Um, so, you know, unfortunately they didn't contact me on how the system worked. I guess they figured they understood it and uh, I guess they didn't. Um, so that was definitely a bummer there. I wish that they had contacted me to, uh, you know, use my system on their scooters, but it is what it is. But yeah, so that's the scooter industry. Um, you kind of just work with it and love it for what it is. So uh, I hope that explained the story behind the system a little bit. Again, too, I wasn't trying to get too much into how the system worked, but obviously I wanted to explain it. I more or less wanted to tell the story on the problem with Pytel compression system. So thank you guys for watching. Leave some comments below for any clarification or future video ideas that you have for me. Thanks.